Film fans of YouTube, hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh, your movie apprentice, and today we continue back with a Ghibli watch through with Hayao Miyazaki's Howl's Moving Castle. After being cursed by the Witch of the Waste, Sophie, who has been turned into an old woman, heads up to the wastelands to try and figure out a way to reverse her spell and ends up in the titular Howl's Moving Castle. Before I get into the view, if you like what I do on this channel, click that like button to help this video get out to more people and consider subscribing to that channel today while hitting the bell notification so you never miss a review that I put out. But without further ado, let's get into the review. So first and foremost, I have to say that Sophie for me is probably my favourite protagonist in all the Ghibli films so far. I love how she's this young teenager and just by getting old, she becomes very, very reflective on what it means to get old and how much freedom there comes with it. She is straight to the point, very no-nonsense when talking to characters. She is literally convincing a demon to cook her food for her because she's just not going to take any of the BS from said demon. She is a great character to watch and I love the dynamics of the spell. It's never revealed really how to remove the spell. It is very much her embracing the maturity of this elderly woman and just getting on with things is great to see and the side cats as well are all fantastic there is turnip head who is probably my favorite cat he's just a scarecrow that's just hopping on a stick the entire time but every time he's on screen i just smile because he is just goes out his way to make sure that sophie is safe and fine at all times. Flame Demon is funny. The little sidekick apprentice of Howl is great. And Howl himself, I'll be honest, he was probably one of my least favorite characters in this film, though he does have a complex thing about him. But he just comes and goes a lot in this film, so I'm not able to get attached to him as I do to Sophie and the rest of these characters. I also have to give a Big shout to the animation, big surprise there, but the way this castle is moving and the amount of moving parts within every shot of this castle, especially the wide shots where you're watching it move between areas. There is a lot of stuff going on in these shots alone. Not only are you showing this big construct moving through changing backgrounds, but each cog and area of this castle is doing its own thing independently. Who knows, it might just be on a loop, but it didn't strike me as being on a loop. It felt like that each castle had its own segment and they all had their own miniature loop. So it gave the castle the feeling of every moving part doing its own individual little thing. And that must be a pain to animate. I can only imagine how long it took to draw all of that and animate all of it. It is truly a marvel, that castle. It is absolutely brilliant. I do love the anti-war themes as well. The underlying core of this film is that two kings are at war because a prince from one side has gone missing and they are accusing the other. Howl is known all through these lands as a magic user and the leaders of the respective countries are trying to summon him to fight on their behalf. But how does something different? He tries to intervene with the war. He sabotages both sides. doesn't do it maliciously, but he goes out his way to try and limit as much war damage as possible within this, which I think was a very clever use of character. And the transformations he goes through are beautifully animated. Going back to Sophie for a little bit as well, her no-notice attitude has received many plaudits from the feminist crowd. Now, as you can see, I'm not really qualified to talk about the feminist aspect of this film, but I can safely say that Sophie is probably one of the strongest characters I have seen. Sophie takes what's usually a very sexist concept of the woman cleaning and actually uses it to her advantage and has everyone else chip in with the cleaning. It's a power tool for her and I love how they flip that social narrative to make it a more empowering thing. She is the character that has it most together in this. She goes from this teenager working in a hat shop, but just because she's turned old by this witch, she is suddenly the big boss, like everyone's terrified. 
to go against the Earth within this, which I think is a very nice touch, and it worked very well for this movie. If I had to point out some flaws where there are some added bits to the film that maybe could have been cut out, like every time I watch one of these Ghibli films, I do go through the Wikipedia and synopsis articles just to make sure I saw everything right, because sometimes Ghibli can be a bit vague. And this is one of the films where it's explained so simply in every synopsis, but it leaves out some things that leave me questioning certain elements. In particular, a certain choice made towards the end that happens and then is changed a minute later and there's no real reason why that original choice had to be made. I don't know, maybe I missed something there, but it was an interesting one. I do have a shout out how they really played with the magical aspect of this as well. Magic is tailor made for animation and they use it to their fullest within this movie. The arcane circles, the magical transformations, the spells that take place, the way this film is plays with lighting in general and the concepts it uses such as a revolving door that goes to different places depending where a dial is turned. It's very well crafted this film. I would say while it's not quite Spirit of the Way or Whisper of the Heart that was for me, it is definitely one of the cleverest Ghibli movies, uh, probably one of the best animated ones, and it just uses its concept really, really, really well. And I found this was a very complete feeling Ghibli film. There are a lot of Ghibli films that feel like they suddenly end, but this one felt very complete, which I really did enjoy. So overall, good to have a say. Great animation. Sophie is a fantastic character. I do love the themes in this of anti-war and feminism. And I just adore all the side characters in this as well. There are some great side characters. So I will give tribute to this. The side characters they've had in the last two or three films have all been outstanding. I don't think there's been a film I've seen for them in a while that doesn't have great side characters. And that's sometimes very hard to pull off. So hats off to you, Ghibli. You have done some great side characters. But overall for me, I'm going to have a say that Howl's Moving Castle for me is a good cup of tea. So Howl's Moving Castle, have you seen it? If you have, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. Again, if you got this far in the video, please drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel for more reviews like this coming all the time while hitting that bell notification so you don't miss another video. Coming out next on the channel, got a few more Ghibli films to get through, and I think there's a couple of new films coming out soon as well. I might get a review out of Promising Young Woman, I'm unsure yet, because it's been out for ages, so I don't know if people will watch that. But if you make this fine, you want to let me know, you want to watch that, then let me know in the comments. But until next time, my name is Josh, I have been Movie Apprentice, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, thank you for watching and thank you for making it to the end of the video. While you're here, if you haven't done it yet, please feel free to drop a like and consider hitting that subscribe button for more views coming all the time. And also, while you are here, there are some other videos over there that you might want to sink your teeth into. Have a good day, guys, and do enjoy.